what is going on youtube so check it out today we're going to be working on this thing so we got a 2009 dodge journey and let me give you guys a little bit of background on this thing so i kind of got screwed by copart on this thing so i bought this as a running driving rig just remember that but when i went when my loader dropped it off um this thing was actually smashed all the way back all the way into the core support so we're gonna be doing a radiator on this thing so fortunately somebody at copart smashed it with the heister or something and i called copart and they're like it's your problem deal with it so no response i emailed them a few times i contacted a gm i sent them emails and pictures to the yard and they just blew me off never responded i called a couple times and it was just a waste of time so at this point i guess i'm stuck fixing the bumper and the radiator and it's my problem but like I said earlier, we bought this thing as running and driving, and it does run and drive just fine. But unfortunately, I already did some work on this thing, and it had a broken transfer case. So as you can see, I don't know if they hit it with something or what, but this is the way it was in the car. It didn't even have the front yoke on here, and the drive line was missing completely out of the car. So it is a running and driving car, but it was only front wheel drive. But I already went ahead and fixed all that. I bought a parts car. so. I couldn't find the parts anywhere, guys. I uh, called a couple of local yards, they didn't have any, and I searched on Cope or car part, and everybody wanted about two to three thousand dollars for those two pieces, the drive line and that transfer case. So, just letting you guys know, if you guys have an all-wheel drive journey, the parts are pretty expensive. But what I did was I bought that one for parts. Um, that one runs and drives and everything, but it's knocking and it overheats after a little while, obviously, probably because it's probably got bad bearings but um so we did steal the parts put them on this one i was test driving it and that radiator started leaking coolant so we're gonna go ahead and do that today so just letting you guys know buyer beware when you buy a running driving car from copart it's not always true but you should know that already that's kind of part of the car business but let's go ahead and get started on this thing as you can see the bumper's already loose because i did take off the the bumper earlier to take pictures of the damage that was underneath it when the transporter dropped it off but unfortunately like i said copart didn't do anything about it they just kind of blew me off so let's go ahead and uh, get this bumper off so we can get a better view it looks like uh, you just got one two three four five clips on top and then i think you got a couple screws on each corner and a couple clips inside the bumper and i think it was like two bolts underneath so i'm gonna put you guys on a quick time lapse while i get that thing off that'll give us access to this radiator Okay guys, so as you can see, that thing's not hard to get off at all. It does have a couple clips on the bottom here. I think it had three, and then it's just a, like three clips on the side and one screw. And then it has just the four clips on top and the same thing on the other side, one screw and four clips. So then you just pull that thing right off. It does clip in right here under the headlight. So it clips into these little brackets. So you will have to give it a tug and then it will come off. And don't forget to unplug your fog lights. So as we can see, um, somebody definitely did hit this thing right here and right here and then uh this is where our, our major damage is at looks like they barely just missed this ac condenser so i might have got lucky but it kind of went came through and it pushed on this drain here so you can see we got a leak right there i don't know if maybe it just loosened the cap from the actual radiator but it needs to be replaced so the procedure on this thing calls that we remove this ac condenser here but i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take it off this radiator loosen it up and see if we can squeeze it out of here with maybe just taking off this horn and this hood latch so let's keep on going i'm going to start by uh, loosening this thing up getting it out of the way so it looks like we just have one clip here we just got to squeeze it with our needle nose pliers and then take these two things off Okay guys, so I was trying to get this clip off here and then I quickly realized that there's actually a bolt here on the side of this thing. So this is your AC condenser lines, but it looks like it's got a 10 millimeter. So we got to go through the inside here on this side over here. You can kind of see your AC lines there and it's actually got the bolt there. So it looks like it's just a 10 or 12 millimeter. So it looks like it might be a little tricky to get into, but we're going to go ahead and remove that and then we should be able to get our AC condenser loose. 
Okay guys, so we did get the bolt out. It's a pretty long bolt. It was kind of a pain, but we got it out with the swivel and a 10 millimeter on our electric ratchet. So, um, yep, definitely thing just pulls forward. So looks like we got to unbolt this transmission cooler line. Uh, you don't want to unbolt the AC compressor side. So that's that's the whole reason for doing this is we're trying to save ourselves a couple bucks by not emptying this Freon because I don't have a Freon machine. So then I got to take it somewhere to get evacuated and get all that stuff done. I do have a vacuum, but it's just kind of a pain. So I'd rather not deal with it, but let's keep on going. I'm going to loosen up these uh, transmission cooler lines and then that should be able to pull up and over this way enough for us to get into our radiator. Okay, so we got those things unbolted as you can see. I think that's going to give us just enough room to squeeze this thing out of here. So we got a good uh, three to four inches on this side and looks like a good, you know, seven or eight on this side. So. Um, looks like we had to take off our lower radiator hose and our upper radiator hose. So looks like this one I had to do it from this side But the lower one looks like it's way down in there So obviously we're gonna have to take off this air filter intake and maybe this coolant reservoir to get to it So let me get those things done and then we'll see if we can get that lower radiator hose off Okay, so we got our upper radiator hose off. I just kind of put it that way. And I took off these things so you guys could get a little better view. And also uh, to get access to this lower radiator hose. As you can see, it's probably going to be a little bit of a pain to get some pliers in there. But it looks like at some point in time, somebody might have already took this thing off. And they actually left it pointed over here forward for me. So I'm going to have to have more fun and see if I can get it out from the bottom there. I don't know why they would leave it like that. But I think what I'm going to end up doing, so... Here on the radiator, you actually have two clips. So you have one here that you gotta squeeze and pop out, and one on the opposite side, right here. So here's a better look at that one. And you gotta squeeze these and pop them out. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this radiator forward and then see if I can get that lower radiator hose off while well, it's forward. I think maybe that's the way they installed it because it's behind this plastic thing here. So let me go ahead and do that and see if we can get it out of here, guys. So there she is, um, we got her out. She was definitely leaking somewhere in this area. As you can see, it's all soaked and on the other side as well. So I don't know if maybe they just hit it enough on this plastic cap just to loosen it up and get it to leak. But here's our new one. We're gonna go ahead and just uh, toss it in there. Uh, just be careful on the way down, make sure the little hooks don't hit this AC condenser and just put it back together, guys. So you wanna put some oil on these things before you put them back together or uh, put some new ones on there if you see that they're a little bit damaged So looks like I might have damaged this one a little bit, so I might have to replace it But yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, put this thing back together and maybe we can take her for a test drive Okay guys, so just a quick little update here. So I went ahead and uh, topped this thing off with coolant, uh, turned it on and it was uh, idling and everything. I let it get up to temperature and the thing sounds good and there was no leaks of coolant. So as I was watching it though, I noticed something dripping right here and you can see on this transmission line, we definitely got oil pouring down the side of this. And maybe I'm thinking that's probably what the reason was of why the radiator swelled up and started leaking maybe maybe it wasn't from the hit but you know maybe a combination of both but either way we got to replace these uh two transmission lines luckily i have a parts car so i already took the parts off of that one over there and it kind of worked out because i was going to pull the bumper off of this black one anyways so here's our new bumper it's all nice and straight our grill's not broken and we're going to slap the white one on that one over there and obviously this one has the cover and everything too that that one's missing 
So it looks like maybe that one just has a lower ballast that we need to take off and put on this one. But other than that, I mean, let's go ahead and uh, put you guys on a quick time lapse. I'll change these two transmission lines. Uh, looks like I got to take this thing off and this, and then those transmission lines actually are pretty easy to get out of there. One bolt here and two clips down there. So I'll do that real quick, and then we can slap this bumper back on, and hopefully we can get this thing on a test drive by the end of the day. Finally, she's alive. So as you guys can see, she is running right now. I'm gonna let this thing warm up. I already did top off the coolant. And uh, it looks like we don't have a leak here out of the hose anymore. So that's looking pretty good. But I'm gonna let it run for a little while and see if all this uh, stays dry. You know, I'm gonna let it warm up, cycle the fans, and check everything else before I put this bumper on. So let's just go ahead and uh, wait for this thing to warm up, you know, and then we can slap that bumper back together and take her for a test drive. Okay guys, so she's been running probably for about half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. And we're looking pretty good. No leaks here. So she's all dry now. I did put some new seals in this here. So that's not leaking as well. And it looks pretty decent. So she's got a new radiator in there finally. We did have to put those extra transmission clear lines. But let's go ahead and put this bumper on. And while I was waiting here, I noticed the fog lights were different. So I had to swap these, uh, these ones onto this one over here. So I went ahead and did that while I was waiting. And now I'm just going to go ahead and throw this black bumper on this one and I send it off to paint shop. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so we just got off the highway. Uh, thing runs and drives great. So she hasn't overheated, the heater's blowing hot, everything's working on it. So yeah. Radiator was in, coolant, uh, transmission cooler lines are in, and I think this thing's ready to go off to paint. So, guys, uh, pretty easy flip on this one. I'm actually going to end up keeping this one. It's a present for my wife. So, yeah, remember, stay up, hustle hard.